Welcome to the Heal Your Hunger Show, where we get to the heart of why you overeat and how to stop. If you struggle with food and weight like I did, welcome home. Welcome everybody to the Heal Your Hunger Show. Really happy that you've joined me here today, and I'm really excited about my guest. Um, we're not doing your conventional health interview here, or we're not talking about all different systems in your body, or, or we're not talking about different aspects of emotional eating. We're talking about something a little further out, which is absolutely essential and very, very pertinent to the emotional eaters experience. So. Um, about two months ago, I had the experience of attending a networking, a networking event where this beautiful woman, uh, Misty Tripoli, was uh, teaching us how to groove. And, and I was fascinating, I was absolutely fascinated by the dance moves that she was teaching us, uh, but even more about your experience, Misty, and how it all came about. So here is Misty, and she's uh, really gonna talk to you about your body and moving your body. And as I said, it's so central to the emotional eaters experience because we've spent so many years hating our bodies and trying to control and change and fight our bodies. And she's really talking here about how to move our bodies and love our bodies. So welcome, Misty. Thank you. It's great to be here. Glad you're here. I know. Yeah, this is awesome. And she lives in Mexico, so this is a big treat to have her here in LA. Woohoo! Yeah, I always got to come and get my groove on in LA That's when I can. Right. That's right. And for anybody who's listening and not watching, um, Misty's here with me in person so she's visiting my home and we're uh, recording here together so that's a big treat and um, and we'll do maybe a little bit down uh, toward the end of the show actually a little visual so uh, for those who are listening you won't he you won't see it but you can always tune in later um, to the show to see Misty because she's she's quite a sight I'll tell you <laughs> she's just beautiful <laughs> So uh, you can see her and then um, it's your groove. So tell me about your experience and how you got into this kind of dance. Or pre and she's the originator of groove as well. Yeah, well, and now it's turned into a global movement. Absolutely. Yeah, now we're in 20 countries and it just, and that's just within a few years. Like it's just exploded wow. because it's such a simple, practical way to approach dance that makes it fun and easy for everybody. So you don't have to be coordinated. You don't have to have experience. You don't have to know right, left, foot. You don't have to feel like you're good at rhythm. Um, Which none of those I am. So <laughs> it's perfect. I, I am uncoordinated. So when people say, "Oh, we're gonna do dance moves," I'm like, "Yeah, count me out." <laughs> yeah, and most I love people. to dance, but only if it's free form, fun. You know, just drive into the move. You know, to, to the music. So I was so happy when we you started teaching us that I'm like, "Oh, good. I don't have to be coordinated like you yep. said. I don't have to." get it all right or you know remember what step goes yeah. where or anything like that so and yet it's not a freeform class because freeform actually scares a lot of people too they're <laughs> like I don't know what to do you tell me to move freeform they just are like I don't know because they've never done it right so dance in all forms actually scares people okay but yet it is the most natural thing that we can do mm -hmm. it's more natural than walking we actually if you put music on with babies they will dance before they walk Oh. And unfortunately, as we get older, it's conditioned out of us. It's feared right out of us. Like right. we're taught a right way to dance and a wrong way to dance. And there's good dancers and bad dancers. And, and then we just get insecure. We hate our bodies. We're afraid to move them. And we just stop dancing. And what I mean by stop dancing is some people will dance, but they'll like... It's the kind of dance where, you know, you go to your Zumba class and you follow the teacher. Or um, groove is just so much different than that. Groove because... <sighs> It just connects you so quickly, so deeply, and so intimately to your, to your creative force, mm -hmm. to so the, whatever it is that beats your heart, and how purely, um, or how pure it is to actually just dance and move to music. Yeah. And I just, I, it's an epidemic actually globally, but so much of it ties back into like what you're doing and and why it all came about for me was because I suffered from bulimia for 16 years. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hated myself. And it started when I was about 14, 15 years old. And just, I remember just looking in the mirror, just disgusted with mm -hmm. myself. And it's so funny, because we can all do this, where I could look back now, and I look at those photos when I was younger, and I was like, God damn, you look I so good! Why wasn't I happy with the body I hated? Yeah, well, and that was also part of my awakening, as I kind of just, I asked myself those questions. I was like, Am I ever going to be okay with this? 
am I ever going to look in the mirror and be okay? Or am I going to die still in the struggle Mm -hmm. with my body? And, and it became very clear to me, like a light going on that said, you were not born to live this way. You were not born to hate your body. And where did that come from? And so I started asking my questions where it came from. And then I started to look around. I was like, I don't, I don't have one example in my life of a woman that loves her body. Mm. I don't see it anywhere. My aunts, my mom, my cousins, my grandmother, everyone's on a diet. Everyone talks negatively about themselves. Yeah. And so, of course, I'm going to repeat that pattern. Yeah. It wasn't my fault, you Absolutely. know? Absolutely. And so this struggle with bulimia, I, you know, I came to LA and so it amplified it exponentially. <laughs> Eating disorder capital to wear Jesus. world. Jesus. <laughs> and then I was in health and wellness. I started teaching aerobics when I was 16. Oh, no. So I could get paid to work out Mm -hmm. um, because that's supposedly healthy, right? Uh, But it's just another form of bulimia. And I abused my body. Mm -hmm. Just, I was teaching 20 classes a week, getting up early to ride the treadmill for an hour before I started work and teach my classes. And I was toxic. I wouldn't, I use foul language, but I wouldn't shit for a week. Like, and I just had boils on my neck and I just... But I didn't care. I had liposuction when I was 21 years old. No. Yeah. That's like terrible. No. Oh, my God. Well, and, no, it's... I, I just like, oh, my God. Where... Like... And I realized, you know, when you go back, I just realized I was completely unconscious. I was completely unaware. Um, I was just repeating the patterns. And I was confused. I didn't know who I was. I was just trying to be beautiful so that I could receive love. Yeah. Um, and not knowing that. I, I wasn't aware of that's what I was doing. But right. that's what I was doing. Of course. But I've always loved to dance. Like my mother called me tippy toes. She's like, you literally jumped out of my vagina onto the table and you just started wailing your arms and your legs and you haven't stopped since. And, and it's true. I just had a knack for it. I always loved it. I followed dance. But due to the fact that my mom had seven children, I couldn't take lessons and you right, know, there right. was no money. So, which was a blessing, actually. It all is a blessing. This is another thing. It's just to trust your life and trust your path and Mm. every little thing, the good, the bad, the ugly. And so when I look back at it, these blessings that brought me to this point. And so this love of dance, but I always dance to impress people. Okay. I I don't think you're the first. (laughs) Right? And I always dance to like, I love to perform. I love to put on a show and I could follow choreography very easily and I had a knack for it and I was just like... And so when I would teach my fitness classes, I would teach them just like everybody else does. Um, I was naturally really good at it because I could dance and I would choreograph for shows and ESPN and I did all this stuff. Did a hip hop world tour. I was a street break dancer. I mean, like, I just, I love dance. But I never danced for me. Like, really for, like, me. Like, my guts, my soul. Like, to express the, the, whatever's going on inside. Yeah. And then... About 10 years ago, when I was in my early 30s, I, um, I had a very powerful, powerful spiritual awakening, like, a, like a, a metaphorical punch in the face that knocked me out. Literally, I couldn't leave my house for two weeks. And what it was, was the truth. The truth just pummeled me, and it was so loud, and it was so um, relentless, And these truths that came up to me were very clear and they are the foundation of the groove method, the methodology that I use to help people dance, Mm -hmm. just let themselves dance. Mm -hmm. And it happened when um, I was was at the pit of my despair. I was bankrupt. I was working 60 hours a week. I was making really good money, but I was living, still living paycheck to paycheck. I um, was unhealthy. I was unhappy in my relationships. I didn't know who I was. And... I some there was some deep, deep, deep callings like my high self inside was making these promptings and I finally started to listen, which was sit down, Misty, be quiet and pay attention. So every morning I would get up and I would sit in my chair and I would just breathe and pay attention. And I, I now know I started my meditation practice at that point. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, I was also called just to dance. And mm-hmm. I, um, I went to a studio every day. And I would put my iPod on and just put it on shuffle and I would dance. And normally when I dance, I try to come up with moves. I try to create moves to teach other people and stuff. And then for the first time in my life, I was just like, what does my body want to do? And how does it feel? And I was totally alone and I still felt stupid even by myself. <laughs> even though I could dance. Right. I still felt stupid. I was like, what? This is like absolute real insanity. And so 
Um, I remember one session I went in and played my music and and the groove method, I literally like it came to me in a download. It was just like, bam, that's what you're supposed to do. And everything I did changed from that moment, the way I taught, um, how I thought about health and wellness and fitness. And then I started to really observe. I started looking at my students and I saw myself in every one of them. And all those women were there because they all hated their bodies and we're all suffering with the same thing. So I started addressing that in my classes. Hmm. I started inviting them to take one of my simple movements and I would be like, don't copy me. Like, oh my God, I've been teaching you to copy me. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what I've been thinking, but don't copy me. You should never look like me. Right. What I want you to do is figure out how your body does this move and how to make it feel good in your body so that your movements heal you and they restore you. And, and I was doing that with myself at the same time. And within six months, bulimia literally just left me. Mm, beautiful. I didn't, I, there was no therapy and I, and, and I don't say don't go to therapy, but dance was my medicine. And within months, it literally just, people say that, how'd you cure yourself? I didn't, it just left me because I started being authentic. Yeah, bingo. I started, I started letting myself yeah. be real and raw. Yeah. And so these five fundamental truths that came to me and they are the basis of my method and what I teach all around the world is number one, no one cares what you look like. And I was obsessed with it. I was so obsessed with what I look like and that everyone would approve of me. And I knew that when I walked into the room, everyone was talking about how big my ass was. And I was just like, and then when that reality, the truth hit me like so hard, it was like, Misty, nobody fucking cares about you. That's true. <laughs> They're all thinking about them. Totally. No one's looking at you. And if they are, then they got serious problems. Yeah. Like they got too much time on their hands. Yeah. And so that became very clear. Number one, no one cares what you look like. And if they do, it really is their problem. Yeah. So I instantly... Stop caring about what people thought about me. The way I dressed, what I, what I said, how I expressed myself, how I danced. I just was like, I'm going to do whatever I want. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what you think about it because I'm not living to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to go to bed happy because I'm happy, not yep. because I'm trying to impress or please Absolutely. someone. The second thing was that I am unique. I should be different. Everyone, there's, we're all different. We Beautiful. should be different. The third is that when I do things my own way, when I do it authentically my own way, I cannot get it wrong. And I applied all this to dance. It's who you are. It's who you are. And when you trust. That's how God made you. Exactly. <laughs> and when you do it, you, you get to light up and you get to experience life at a whole other level. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then the fourth one was, no one will do it for you. Mm, and no one can do it for you. And so if you want to dance, you actually have to dance. Mm -hmm. If you want to be free, you have to liberate yourself. No one can do it for you. No one can actually make you healthy. No one can make you love your body. No one can make you do anything. Um, and the fifth one is those first four things are just really good ideas until you apply them. Right. And so the dance floor, what I created was a space, a safe, welcoming, non-judgmental, nobody gives a shit space where you get to apply those four simple principles to movement. And it is baffling the results that happen. Oh my God! And I've I've witnessed it. You got I to have participate. Witnessed it. A, a whole room full of women, awkward and self conscious, and like, what's she gonna make us do? You know. And all of a sudden, we're moving around in a circle. You know, walking the whole you know span of the room, and you're telling us you know little little suggestions to to start you know getting comfortable in our bodies. And before you know it, we're just ecstatic. We're just like in so much joy and fun and and we're also interacting with each other too totally. that's right? that's a very important yeah part so it's like we're doing our own thing and we're authentic in our bodies and at the same time we're super aware of people around us and we're having these sweet little connections with people so talk a little bit about how it actually plays out well that's the magic of the group dance floor because if not it's just another kind of dance experience right. the part that really makes it so magical is the unity because Every human being needs to belong. So you always do it in a group? I Well, I have a home practice that you do by yourself, but okay. it's very therapeutic and it's very um, where you really want to do it in privacy so okay. that you're by yourself and you can really get to know yourself. That's okay. a whole different practice. But okay. the groove dance floor is done in a group. It's a group dance okay. experience. Okay. And the unity is key. So what happens and how it works is I establish I'm the facilitator I hold your hand all the way through mm -hmm. it's not a freestyle I don't just put music on and say yeah. go do no, whatever you're gonna no. do 
Uh, that would be, I can see how that would be anxiety producing for most people. Uh, yes. Yeah. They freak out. They're yeah. like, oh, this is a little what? So I'm like, nope, I'm going to teach you a move or a rhythm. It will be very simple. That I know you can do like walking, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter if you're on your right. It doesn't matter if you're on your left. And it doesn't matter what rhythm pat. Like if you feel the rhythm differently than we do, trust the way your body feels the rhythm. But for instance, I'll say, okay, we're going to walk. So I get everyone unified in just a walk, a one, two, one, two, and you can repeat it. And I get people so that they're into like, well, what I like to think is like a mantra of movement. So their brains, you can stop the obsessive thinking of judging yourself. Oh my God, I look stupid. Oh my God, because this is going to spin if you've never done it before. Right. Everyone's looking at me. Oh my God, I'm just, this is awkward. I feel like... yeah. So what I try to do is give your brain something to chew on so it's not judging. Okay, I forgot about that part. Right? Uh -huh. Well, you you wouldn't have known it. I didn't even oh, tell I you that. Okay. I don't That's have to tell you that. It's okay. unspoken. Gotcha, I just, gotcha. I do that. That's like one of my little secret weapons, gotcha. right? So I just get you, I get you saying, okay, now in your mind, everyone together say one, two, one, two, one. And if your brain has something to do, it can't think two thoughts at one time. Gotcha. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. So I get you out of your head and into your body very quickly, very easily with walking. Mm -hmm. So what we do with walking is I, and then I tell you the truth, don't follow anyone. There's no lines. There's, I want you to explore all the different places you can walk. I want you to explore all the different directions. You can go backwards and sideways, you can turn. And then I let you explore it, but you can't get it wrong. Right. However you choose to do it is the right way. Right. And then I'll ask you and give you little promptings like, okay, what would happen, because you're listening to the music, if it's a funky song, like, play that funky music, or whatever. I'll be like, okay, now it's a funky song. So what happens if you start to let your head move while you're walking? What happens if you let your arms move and you add your personality to your walk? Mm -hmm. And so before you know it, everyone's like, it's, it's a raging dance party within moments. <laughs> because people get, oh, the unity. And then because we're all in that sync together, we're in the groove together, we can communicate. Right. So as we're walking around, we can walk around each other, we can play with each other, we can high five each other, we yeah. can, right? So it creates this very interactive, but I think what Groove is, is basically what I know I've, I'm, I've created is I'm bringing back the ritualistic tribal dance that we did thousands and thousands of years ago, and I've made it modern, fun, and, and funky. That's awesome. And accessible to everybody. And it is, it really is. How do people who are uber curious right now how do they learn about how to get involved in this well the first thing is you can go to our facebook page or our website okay the world groove movement .com or okay. the facebook page and it has okay. all the information we have and I'll put, I'll put those links in our show notes also yeah which would be great and yeah. i i hope i get to groove with you all I've, i'm actually i don't know when this is going to air but i've got some events here in la coming up i've actually got a groove dance camp happening next week out in Vista, oh, wow. where you get to come for three days and go camping and dance bonfire dances over the full moon, like with other people that are just of like mind that just, we're all on the same path learning to love ourselves. And when you do it with other people and you get to share with them and I turn them into socials, it's not just a, I love to, we do a dance floor and then we have a big social and everyone gets to yeah. talk and it's share sweet. stories. It's such a bonding experience. It is. Yeah. That's so sweet. So, but we also have trainings and I have okay. retreats and I have okay. workshops and I have like, it's, I've tried to uh, address people because not everyone wants to get trained to teach, to learn sure. how to teach it because we sure. teach people how to do it with kids and with adults, but some people just want to do more of it. They just want, I want more dance in my life and I want more fun in my life. Yeah. And, and this is a, I try to create as many opportunities for people to come together, connect and really just get their groove on together. It's so amazing. Dance, like you said, it's really a universal language, you know, and um, I don't know if you saw the Oscars recently, uh, well, just last week, but um, um, Justin Timberlake started out with his song from Trolls, um, the happy song, and um, normally the Oscars doesn't start with that. Usually it's the monologue from the guy running, guy or woman running it, um, but he, they started with his song, and he was up and down the aisles, and he had a cast of people up and down the aisles dancing, and everybody in the whole auditorium was dancing. And it was so cool because you know there was so much tension in that room before the Oscars started. Like, it's, oh my God, you know, am I going to win? You know, my family's here. Like, every day, the whole world's watching. And there was so much tension that's normally just there because they just go right into the show. 
But when everybody, it's like I could feel it. I was just watching from the television, but everybody just relaxed and they got happy and they got back in community, not competition. And it was amazing how that song and that dancing just released that energy. And then the whole show is fantastic just up, up until the end. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance to watch it. Yeah. But, um... but it was, but it was, I just thought to myself, they should do that every award show. Like they should have people dance at the first of the show because it really does release people's tension and it, and it unifies them it unifies them and it does it just because it's just the most natural normal thing that we do yeah. and we've done it together for th- eons yeah. like it's just you got to figure that if you just go back into our human past it's we used it for everything to praise to celebrate to to mourn to to heal to it was because it's not like anything else. Right. It's not like anything else because it, your body is your vehicle. Right. It's your meat suit. It's what you have to live in for this life. And it's built to move creatively. Yeah. It's built to be weird and awkward and playful and fun. It's our, I always look at I always say that we are in pleasurized, sensorized meat suits that are literally <laughs> for, the way I look at it is like this body was built for pleasure. And when I figured that out and I learned to really go, whoa, it may not be perfect according to what society deems as perfect. And I'm going to stop reaching for that because that's just stupid Mm -hmm. and it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. What I'm reaching for now is the feel good. I just want to feel good all the time and and all pleasure through my food, through my touch, through my talk, through my Mm -hmm. smells, through the music and things I allow in. Um, everything. It's like, I, I'm on a quest for delicious pleasure. Like that's, that's, and that's why I create these events too, because I want people to experience truly how good it can feel to be in your body. Yeah. Even if you hate your body, Mm -hmm. I can, I trust me one hour with me by the end. And this is what typically happens is people just are in tears because they're like, I've never allowed myself to do that. Yeah. And oh my God, it feels so good. And some people, it's kind of even a morning of, I've never allowed myself, this is the first time I've done this. But what's cool is that you can't go back. Yeah. You can't go back. Well, it's so true. It's sort of like we don't we don't know what we're doing to ourselves until we experience not doing it to ourselves. You know, that's when we're, the contrast is really what we are able to, when we're able to see it. So I can imagine how that would be the case, you know. Yeah. And that's true. I mean, anytime we do something good and self-caring for ourselves, then we create the contrast and we can see. And I think the morning does come in. You know, anybody who's conscious is going to say, oh my God, I can't believe I lived in bondage for so long, you know, that I, I held myself in bondage for so long, mm-hmm. you know, so. And even very conscious, aware people, the spiritual leaders, yeah. the whatever, they're just as afraid of dance as everybody else. Interesting. Which I find. insecurities. I find that it is like, whoa, really? <laughs> How liberated are we? Yeah. How really, like. And so I really like to push those buttons too. Mm, that's beautiful. To bring them to a new level. And I, I've got to, I can't wait. I have an opportunity to groove thanks to Dr. Marcy Cole. Okay. I'll be grooving the Association of Transformational Leaders conference this weekend no. in Los Angeles. How cool. And I'm, I'm leading a da- an hour and a half dance party on oh Saturday my night. Oh God, that's awesome. And I can't wait because I love to push them. Like we apply all these amazing principles, but... Let's see how free you are in your beautiful vehicle. Yeah. Because that's your, that's your, this is your ship. Yep. That you're, you're housed in for a while. Yeah. I just love that, Misty. <laughs> so, it's so good. And, and there's no limit either to no. how, you know, how integrated you can get with your body, right? And your whole being. I mean, it's just, it's, it's increments. It's, you don't get there, you know, in no. a flash. It takes practice. But I'm sure there's, like, you can push the bar, you know, I mean, push it all, all along the way. Even somebody who's used to dancing can probably release some kind of blocks along the way as well. Completely. Yeah. Well, like, I work with, I've gone and taught at Broadway Dance Center in New York City with some of the best dancers in the world and prima ballerinas, and they're not free in their bodies at all. They have all the technique in the world. Well, I can imagine. But you say, <laughs> you know, like, show me some creativity. 
they 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 literally like go into like oh, I don't know what to do. So it's on all levels from people that are amazing yeah. dancers to people, right? So that's what, like what you said. There's yeah. always layers of yeah. opening and awakening. And I've been doing this for a long time, and I still surprise myself. And that's when I get so excited when I dance. I'm like, oh, like, oh my god, did I just do that? That's beautiful. Yeah, all the time. Wow. But dance is my way of really truly nurturing and make and making sweet, delicious, compassionate love to myself. That's so beautiful, and it's written all over you. Thanks, babe. <laughs> um, tell me your tell me the five things again. I think I think now that people heard you talk about it, it, it'll it'll mean even more to them. So the first one, and this is the one that became the most loud for me at the beginning, was no one cares what you look like. Mm-hmm. Love it. No one's thinking about you. Great for people with body image issues, right? <laughs> Trust me, nobody cares. Yep. Like. No one's losing sleep. No one's at home concerned and worried about that you've gained weight or lost weight or that nobody cares. So stop trying to impress people. Yeah. It's impress yourself. Yeah. Okay. And if they do care, it's really their problem. Of course. (laughs) Let them deal with their own shit. Right. The second is you are unique. You should absolutely be different. Let yourself be different. Yeah. Let yourself be an authentic individual. Mm -hmm. The third is when you do something your way, authentically your own way it is impossible to get it wrong you cannot fail love it you can't Mm -hmm. um the fourth is that no one can do it for you and no one will Mm -hmm. no one's going to rescue you no one's going to save you no one's going to get healthy for you you just if you want to you've really got to champion your own life and you've got to champion for yourself yeah and it matters most to us because we have to live in our bodies 24 7 exactly and so that's why i really recommend to people just be a champion for yourself like you would for any cause that's important to you. Champion your happiness. Champion your, you know, you your your health and yep. your, your body. Advocate for it. Exactly. Yep. Like you would anything else, yep. you know, invest totally. in it and, you know, put, spend time on it. And, yeah. and the last one is all of these are just great ideas until you put it into practice. Right. That you don't understand anything. And we all know these things. There's things I'm saying. We all know them logically. Yeah. But they don't mean anything until you actually see what it feels like to apply them. And, and that's why like the groove dance floor is so powerful because you get to feel those things instantaneously and it's, 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 it's baffling. That's why so many people have such a powerful transformation just even within an hour on the dance floor. They just, they, cause they got to feel how good it feels to not get it wrong, to be authentic, to, um, be unique and creative and unified and feel that that their way is the right way mm-hmm. and to trust themselves and to no trust mistakes. the way their body wants to move. Yeah, Even it. if it looks ridiculous. I always tell people, <laughs> when you look completely different than everyone in the room, you're getting it right. right. Don't I try to copy. Be yourself. Be your own individual. That's cool. What can um, people do who are listening if they if are not driving or are not at work? <laughs> what can people do to start? And we could do it here right now, but people listening can do it too. So um, if you want to get up and show us some things that okay. we can do. Do us try to move these out of the way? Yeah. Okay. So it's really, really quite simple. And what I like for people that if you're nervous about dance or movement is just put some music on that, that makes you happy, that makes you want to dance or make you want to move. And it can be anything, fast, slow, rock and roll, doesn't matter the genre. Mm-hmm. And ultimately, just start by just putting like a rhythm in your feet, like however you feel it. And I'll, for me, like I, what I'd like to do is I start people with walking because I think walking's the best way to go and pretty much most of us can walk. Mm-hmm. But I've even worked with people with, in wheelchairs, so it's, it's just movement. Sure. So as you're walking, I'll be like, I'll ask you questions. So start to walk to the music, walk around the room, see if you can turn while you walk. Again, you don't have to have any dance training for any of this. See if you can walk sideways, see if you can walk backwards. All this stuff. So once you've started to explore and you're like, oh, I got this. I can turn when I want. Whatever that might be, I'll ask questions. And I'm going to ask you questions. So while you're walking, what would happen if you started to put some style into it and some confidence? And maybe, you know, put some head movement into it. You know, what would happen if you used your arms? And what I like to do is don't just explore. Like, see where you can put your arms. It doesn't matter. You can put them anywhere you want. All right? So it's this just being willing to, just while you're walking, move your body parts and the next layer of it, which I think is the best layer, is that while you're doing it, what I like to do is just feel. So I was always I'm like, ooh, I want to make myself feel good. So what like movements while I'm walking? I like to move my butt a lot. 
<laughs> because it makes my spine move and it keeps my spine mobile. So while I'm walking, I see if I can move my ass, I see if I can move my arms, and then it just turns into this funky, fun walking dance. And you can do that anywhere. You can do it at home. If you've got kids, get your kids out, play the music, get them walking around and doing fun dance walks with you. And it really is just as simple as walking. And so if you can start there and know that you can't fail and that you are a good dancer, you are, everyone is, everyone is. Yeah. But it's that they think that there's a right way and a wrong way. Yeah. And in Groove, there is no right way to dance. But the key is that the unity. So if you're at home, you can do that by yourself. But in a group, it amplifies it and takes it to a whole other level. Yeah, and, and it's, um, you know, fear begets p fear. So if everybody's closed in, that'll spread. But when you're getting people moving and you see other people getting out of themselves and, you know, daring to take a funky step and move their arms in a funky way, all of a sudden it's making it okay for other people to do the same thing. Completely. And I try to even get them to embody it so much that I even ask for... You know, if it's a funky song, like, what kind of, like, funky expression on your face? <laughs> right? Because if you can pull it up to your face, that means you fully embodied it. Okay. Right? Because a lot of times when people dance, they're so afraid their face goes blank. Okay. And they're moving their body, but their face is like, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> like a deer caught in headlights. Uh -huh. So what I like to do is, like, put the personality in your face. Like, when you walk past people, smile at them, wink at them. And once you start to do that, it just loosens everything up. And people all realize that we can have fun together. Like, right. we can walk. Yeah. yeah, so we can walk. Boom, see? And then it's just easy. And then we can walk past. We can do a little high. Yep, yeah, we can wave at each other. And when you make these connections, it just, it, it is, it's just powerful. We can walk, dance together. And I'll be like, oh, I'm bored with you. I'm going to walk away. <laughs> you know, it's just, this is what makes Groove so special, is that your way's your way, my way's my way, but we can do it together. Yeah. And that's so what makes beautiful. it so powerful. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Yeah. You're an angel. Oh, thank you. It's a sweetheart. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. If you uh, just listened today and you want to just check it out, go to healyourhunger.com. You can check out our uh, podcast and see beautiful Misty and how she moves. And I really appreciate uh, you being here today. And you have a great one. If you enjoyed this show and want to get free support, insider health info, exclusive invites to events, and more, visit HealYourHunger.com.